and welcome in a uh, very hot and uh, muggy uh, South Carolina. Um, this is going to be a little clip for, uh, for all you new growers. I'm going to tell you something about fungicides today. Um, when you start growing and you get into this hobby, you start growing a pumpkin and uh, you, learn, you learn some stuff. You learn about a lot of watering, and you hear a lot of stuff too. You need a lot of watering. Some use Miracle Grow, milk injected. Um, then some of you find the BigPumpkins.com, and you learn about how important the soil is, and soil testing, how important uh, uh, Mycorrhiza is, and all kinds of stuff. Then as you start growing, and uh, you get some problems here and there, you start to realize that maybe 85% of growing is keeping your plant healthy because no matter how good your soil is no matter how good you fertilize no matter how good you water if your plants get sick it's game over and uh, having your end your season end uh, uh, premature because of uh, a dying plant is just about the worst thing that can happen so today I'm going to tell you a little bit about fungicides now here is uh, the majority of the assortment that we use now, what do you got to know about fungicides? Well, first off, you want to start with a, uh, a basic assortment. You want to have uh, fungicides that cover a large range of diseases. Some of those fungicides are, for instance, these three here. They're broad spectrum fungicides. They cover uh, a, a large amount of diseases. And uh, uh, they're also contact fungicides, which means that they're going to have to touch uh, whatever disease there is, um, they're going to have to coat the leaf and you're going to have to spray thoroughly with these. You're going to have to spray upper and underside of the leaf to coat the entire thing. Um, this one, the one that's used by a lot of growers, this is Daconil. Uh, it's a brand name. There are uh, generic versions out there by, by Automax. The um, active ingredient is uh, Chloretanil. And it's, uh, it's a broad spectrum fungicide that uh, covers a lot of the diseases, uh, um, stuff like uh, powdery mildew, uh, one of the most important ones, I think. And it's a preventative fungicide, which means that you spray this uh, basically from season start and try to not get it on your plants. So that's a preventative fungicide. Um, another one like that is the eagle here. Uh, this one is the number one fungicide, in my opinion, against powdery mildew. Ever since we had this one, um, we haven't had any signs of powdery mildew, nor uh, get it on the leaf, nothing, nothing whatsoever. So uh, a, a great fungicide, in my opinion, and used by a lot of growers, too. In the middle there, there's copper. Uh, that's something we use against uh, leaf spots. Not used by everybody, but something uh, uh, that we use. And um, it also adds a little bit of copper to the plant. So if, you're, uh, if your soil test shows that you're low in copper, then using a fungicide like this in your rotation uh, can actually help you uh, make up for some uh, nutrient uh, deficiencies. So these are broad spectrum fungicides, contact fungicides that need to cover the whole leaf. They're preventative. Uh, they uh, uh, don't get rid of the disease once it's there, but they basically prevent the disease from taking hold on your plant and uh, stuff like the eagle will control it once the uh, disease is there. Um, uh, these three uh, I can only recommend. Uh, if you use copper you don't have to but if you do be careful. High phosphorus fungicides and uh, fertilizers uh, can form an issue. You can get leaf burn. Uh, high humidity in where you got a lot of dew on the leaves in the morning uh, uh, can prevent the leaves from drying even if you spray in the evening and then if it hasn't dried up completely before the sun comes up you can get some burn so you gotta be careful um, that goes for all these fungicides um, then over here these are systemic fungicides and systemic means that they uh, uh, the plant takes them up uh, they enter the system of the plant and they work from within uh, they either boost the immune system or uh, have different mode of action that uh, uh, work from within the plant so the, these necessarily do not have to coat the leaves they go into the plant they enter the stomata uh, or some of them through the roots and then uh, uh, they're going to be a part of the plant and work that way the 3336 here that's clearies that's one that's used by a lot of uh, 
A lot of growers do. We use it against rots, brown rot, root diseases. We use it as a drench mainly, but on occasion as a foliar. This one here we used for the first time this year, Agrifos. Um, I can tell you at the end of the season if it worked. It's against downy mildew. Uh, uh, it's a fungicide, a fungicide based on uh, uh, phosphoric acid. Another one like that would be uh, TKO, which you could purchase at uh, the Extreme Pumpkin Store, uh, Tom Privitera's uh, uh, shop, which you can find on BP. And uh, it's used by a lot of growers too, at least the TKO is. Um, uh, we got this one, uh, and uh, uh, it's a systemic too. It goes into uh, the system of the plant, and hopefully it will help us uh, prevent uh, uh, from getting disease. This one here, another broad spectrum. Uh, we had it for about two years now, that's why the label's missing, but it's dethane. Uh, another contact fungicide, there's uh, quite a bit of manganese in here and a little bit of zinc, which uh, can help with deficiencies, just like the copper, and uh, it helps against, uh, for instance, the downy mildew too, so it's, uh, it's the mildews, it leaves spots, it's all kinds of nasty stuff that your plant can get. So we have broad spectrum contact fungicides, we have uh, systemic fungicides and then uh, these are mainly uh, for uh, leaf issues. Here we got two fungicides that we use that we uh, use for uh, soil issues. That means uh, root rot, uh, uh, fusarium, all kinds of nasty stuff that uh, can attack from below. Um, we started using this after our season in 2010 which uh, ended up in uh, uh, losing a couple of plants and having no fruit at the end of the season. And in 2011, using these helped us uh, get through the season successfully and end up with a winning fruit at a way off. So, uh, uh, Terrachlor, uh, stuff that helps against, uh, again, the Fusarium, uh, Rhizoctonia, uh, Root Rot, uh, all kinds of issues in the soil. Same thing with Chipco, uh, attacks the same diseases but they got different uh, active ingredients which means that uh, they work a little bit differently. Um, and uh, uh, these get drenched, they do not get uh, 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 sprayed on the leaves, it would kill the plant, so they get drenched and you got to be careful not to uh, 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 touch your plant when you drench them with this stuff. It, uh, it has to go in the, into the soil and into the root, root zone, the rhizosphere. So soil, um, leaf diseases, and then we've got contact and systemic fungicides. So this is all the chemical stuff but besides the chemical stuff you can add to that biocontrols. Now biological fungicides are fungicides that use either bacteria or uh, fungus, uh, fungi to uh, battle disease. Here we got one that's very popular. The Companion, it's a hydrophonic fungicide that uses uh, bacteria to uh, battle disease, either to compete for uh, uh, a room within the rhizosphere or just by attacking it. Uh, this particular one has uh, Bacillus subtilis, uh, bacterium that is uh, naturally found in the soil, but this will add a boost of it. Here's the Actinovate, which is uh, another bacterial fungicide that can be used as a foliar and as a drench uh, using a bacterium that I'm not even going to try to pronounce to uh, protect your plant. Root shield, that's a different one, no bacteria in this. This uses uh, a particular strain of uh, Trichoderma harzanium, which is uh, uh, basically a predatory fungi, a um, uh, fungus that attacks uh, other bad fungus, other pathogens in your soil, and uh, used by a lot of growers too. So besides the chemical arsenal, we got these bacterial arsenals or uh, inoculums that uh, help protect our plant too. So we try to minimize the risk and uh, really use everything that's out there to, uh, to protect our plants. Biologicals, chemicals, and then broad spectrum and systemic, and then over there for soil diseases. And over here, here's a couple of the things we use against bugs, and uh, you will find that with both fungicides and insecticides there's hundreds hundreds of products on the market and uh, you're gonna have to educate yourself about what is used in your area what you need and talk to other growers uh, uh, look on BP look online and educate yourself especially in the winter time use that time to get uh, to get familiar with all this stuff
Here's garlic barrier, and that's not an insecticide, but mainly a, uh, a deterrent. It has helped us uh, uh, keep uh, cucumber beetles away from the patch. We haven't seen one in maybe three years. And uh, the stinky garlic smell that comes off this uh, uh, seems to be perfect to, uh, for keeping them away. Over here, not an insecticide called Bifin IT. Um, the active ingredient in here is Bifintrin. Now this is a generic, uh, uh, a generic ball, a generic brand. Uh, a brand name for this would be Tall Star, uh, which is a little bit more expensive, but has the same amount of active ingredient in it. And uh, this is uh, for us uh, an everyday, all-round uh, uh, contact killer. This has to uh, touch the insect to kill it. It will coat your leaf for several days, depending on uh, if it rains. And uh, uh, we use it every year. It helps us uh, with squash bugs, cucumber beetles, and all kinds of nasty stuff. Then here, same as with the fungicides, you need contact and systemic. Now the merit is used in pumpkin growing a lot too. Um, this is uh, Merit 75 uh, WP. It's a uh, nasty poison with 75% of the poison in it. This uh, you drench, then the plant uh, takes it up in its system, and if there's a bug eating from the plant, it will die after eating the plant. So it will do damage, but only one time, and after that they all die. Uh, it's mainly used as a drench, but you can use it as a foliar too. We've used it successfully to get rid of uh, aphids on our melon plant, and uh, widely used in growing and uh, uh, very good stuff. Now, let me tell you something real fast about active ingredient. <laughs> There's a product that you can get at Lowe's that I see uh, some of the new growers use, which is called Bayer Tree and Shrub. It has the same active ingredient that's in the merit, but in Bayer Tree and Shrub, it's 0.01% or something like that. In this one, it's 75%. That means uh, where I only have to use half a teaspoon uh, of this on, uh, on on maybe a four gallon tank or a teaspoon and then water it in I would have to almost use a whole bottle of buyer tree and shrub to get the same amount so oftentimes you're better off spending a little bit more money to get a professional agricultural or horticultural product like this than to go to, to Lowe's or to Walmart and get uh, the stuff because the active ingredient in this is uh, of a much higher percentage and so you need a lot less and a little bottle like this of a couple of ounces only um, uh, this this will last us for uh, at least two years because uh, you don't need a lot of it while if you use the buyer tree and shrub you're gonna have to use maybe two bottles a year so uh, that's a tip I can give you invest in professional uh, uh, fungicides and pesticides to keep your plant healthy um, another thing I'm gonna have to tell you especially with the fungicides here is that a lot of you, even the new growers, will use Microhesa. Now, there's lists, uh, a list like that you could find on, again, uh, Tom Prefitero's Extreme Pumpkin Store, of compatibility. Some of these fungicides will affect uh, your Microhesa, its effectiveness, and uh, uh, stuff like the Terrachlor and the Clearies are basically non-compatible. Um, you can choose your fungicides based on that, based on the compatibility with uh, Microhesa. We chose to go with this one because uh, uh, having no disease for us was more important than having a successful uh, colonization of Microhesa. But um, if you want to educate yourself, which I recommend you do, go and find a list of compatibility and then you can choose either uh, fungicides that do not affect Micor or uh, take the risk of having uh, a less effective mycorrhiza and uh, use some of these fungicides. So that's going to be entirely up to you. All right. That's some of the information I can give you about fungicides. Um, using fungicides and pesticides will help you have an, uh, a good season. They will help you battle disease. Um, unfortunately, if the weather doesn't cooperate, and you get conditions in where uh, disease can flourish despite all the fungicides and pesticides at times it will beat you so don't don't be discouraged by that um, come up with a strategy get yourself a good assortment of fungicides and pesticides and if you do see signs on your leaves or on your uh, vines then uh, don't freak out the most important thing you can do is get a correct diagnosis Use your extension, 
use a grower friend, a more experienced grower, use bigpumpkins.com, um, get the correct diagnosis, and then based on that, uh, either uh, purchase the correct fungicides or pesticides, and then battle it from there. Always stay cool and uh, go with the flow. All right, so to all you new growers, I wish you happy growing and good luck. I hope you all make it till the end of the season. And uh, from a hot and muggy South Carolina, over and out.